désolé, désolé, il y a des petits problèmes techniques. Donc, uh, we will go with the presentation because. Uh, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Bertru Nadesa from Ministry of Agriculture in Ethiopia. The title of my presentation is Decades of Impacts of Buried Projects on the Restoration of Productivity of Degraded Lands, Biodiversity and uh, Improving Food Security and Resilient Building Against Climate Change is the title of my presentation. like they are here. Okay. The presentation is structured into introduction and objectives of the project and the methodologies and approach, major activity components, decades of impacts of merit project, major challenges and constraints, and finally conclusion and the recommendation will be presented. Ethiopia is a large country with about 1.3 million square kilometers, and the country is endowed with rich ecological, cultural, and natural resources that make the country center of attraction for development. Uh, uh, the altitude ranges from about 120 meters below sea level to 620 meters above sea level. The population is currently estimated to be about 100 million, out of which more than 80 lives in the rural areas. Agriculture is the main driver of the economy, but the efforts are underway to make the economy industry-led economy. Land degradation is one of the major factors undermining productivity and food security in Ethiopia. It is causing serious vulnerability to drought and the climate change causes loss of vegetation and the bio mass and also disrupted the hydrological balances and the water is causing serious shortage of uh, water for domestic and small scale irrigation. It also disrupts soil fertility and the productivity and as a result, Ethiopia is losing about two to three percent of gross agricultural domestic products every year which translates to about one billion US dollar. Cognizant to the problem of land degradation, the Ethiopian government launched massive land rehabilitation during the last three couple of decades with the support of development partners, which eventually yielded fruitful results. One of the most successful and the model program in this area is Marriott Project, a program that is supported by the World Food Program, which has been operating in Ethiopia for more than three decades, so this paper is briefly describing the experiences, success stories, and the best practices and its impacts in Ethiopia for the last three decades. The main objective of the project is rehabilitation of degraded lands, restoration of uh, watershed management and uh, residue against climate shock through enhancement of productivity, asset creation, 
income generation and the diversification of the livelihoods of the beneficiaries. During the last two decades, the project has been operating in six regional states and uh, 72 districts. Uh, in Tigray, 17, in Amara, 23, in Oromia, about 16, in the South, 12, in Somalia, 3, and uh, in the Redo Administrative Council. The total number of beneficiaries during the three decades is about 1.5 million, out of which 40% are women. Uh, the project adopted community-based partial watershed management approach where the community is participating in all development states, starting from problem identification, in selection of the technologies, and also during implementation, as well as during reviewing the program together with the technical staff to design strategies for improvement. The program is also gender sensitive where women are empowered for decision making about 50% of the planning team is composed of women. This gives best opportunity for women for selecting appropriate technology that can specifically address the problem of uh, women. The project also adopted integrated watershed management approach, and it follows watershed logic approach and uh, holistic development approach that enables the project to address comprehensively both the environmental and the social economic problems of the community. The project is working in partnership with the various development partners, with different projects and the programs, also with research institutions and other stakeholders in order to acquire new technologies, technical support, and additional resources to promote complementarities and synergy that enable the project to efficiently and effectively address the problem of land degradation and also for improving food security and the livelihood of the pro the, the communities, the project also working in with the community, especially in uh, demonstrating new technologies that it is working with the community in uh, testing, demonstrating, replicating new technologies. This basically increased the rate of adoption and the replication of the new technologies. The project also developed result-based monitoring and evaluation and has uh, based capacity strategy, which equipped the project with uh, high, highly qualified technical staff that can plan and implement top quality soil conservation workers at the field level and who also can provide technical supports, including on-job training at the field level. And in most cases, most of the technical staffs working at the federal, regional, and the local levels are regularly monitoring and evaluating the project activities, and also they are reviewing the program with the technical, uh, with the beneficiary communities in order to design uh, strategies uh, for improvement. All these increase the efficiency and uh, performance of the project. It also adopted effective strategies for scaling up the best practices, such as farmers' field delays, review meeting and workshops, and also field uh, experience uh, sharing field visit, which is often supported by practical field observation. All this helped the project to uh, successfully scale up the best practice as a field level. The major activity components, the project implements three major activity components. The first and the foremost one is uh, physical and soil water conservation activities, such as hillside and the farmland terraces, contour trenches, micro basins, and the various water harvesting soil conservation, and the purpose is to control the accelerated uh, runoff and the flood and the to prevent any loss of rain from the raindrop from the water catchment, from the catchment is, and to increase amount of water yields in the catchment in order to enhance natural regeneration and also to increase the rate of establishment and uh, survival of the planted species. The biological cell organization includes the introduction and the planting of forestry, agroforestry, improved forage species, and other multi-purpose species in closed areas in and around gullies, uh, on conservation structures around farm boundaries, and as much possible to plant in every vacant area in order to increase amount of biomass and to stabilize the degraded environment, and also to avail in amount of biomass for the community for different purposes. The other one is income generation and the livelihood package. 
which are integrated to land rehabilitation program. This is basically intended to transform the livelihood of the beneficiary farmers and also to alleviate poverty among the project beneficiaries. Accordingly, the project implemented various uh, water harvesting and soil conservation measures, which includes widespread construction of farmland and hillside terraces in order to control erosion on farmland areas, also to restore the productivity of degraded uh, hillsides and farmland, farmlands. Also, it includes the construction of various water harvesting and soil conservation, such as contour trenches, micro basins, percolation bonds. The idea is to control uh, accelerated flood and uh, the runoff and to increase amount of infiltration of water into the soil to increase the overall moisture conditions in the degraded environment and also to increase amount of water yields in the catchment is for small scale irrigation and for domestic purposes. Uh, Gali is another major problem uh, of land degradation in, in Ethiopia, which is causing serious damage to many productive land. So the project has implemented massive uh, Gali rehabilitation measures such as sediment storage, sediment storage dam and check dams and other vegetative and biological soil conservation in order to rehabilitate the gullies and also to make them more productive and uh, at the same time to increase land that is available for uh, cultivation and for, for production purpose. There are different biological soil conservation that have been integrated into physical soil conservation and this again as I said it includes the planting of forestry, agroforestry and other uh, improved forage species and the multi-purpose species which are planted in closed areas around uh, and in gullies on uh, conservation structures on far boundaries and as home steers. The overall purpose is to stabilize the degraded uh, environment and also to establish the conservation structures and also to produce an amount of biomass for the community for livestock food, uh, livestock feed, fuel wood and the construction materials and also to sustainably conserve this degraded environment. The other uh, component that have been integrated into soil conservation is the income generation and the livelihood package. This is basically intended to specifically improve the livelihood of the beneficiaries. The different income generation and livelihoods that have been integrated include horticulture development, both vegetable and uh, uh, fruit production, beekeeping, poultry, small scale animal fattening, and uh, dairy farming which is also supported by soil organic matter management, soil fertility management, and the small scale irrigation. The soil fertility management that is integrated is basically the soil organic management techniques such as, such as preparing and using of compost, green manuring, and crop residue in order to improve the fertility of the degraded lands. The small scale irrigation is integrated again, both the soil fertility management and the income the small-scale irrigation are integrated to enable intensification of productivity and a diversification of sources of an, uh, income that enables the farmers to achieve more income from a small size of land holding they have. So when it comes to the major achievements and impacts of the project, many degraded lands which were barren, devoid of any vegetation, and that have been uh, goldy lands were changed into productive lands and uh, green environment in relatively short period of time. This is another, uh, in order to illustrate just some of the restoration of productivity and the boosting of uh, productivity of degraded lands. This is one of the famous model watershed in one of our reg regions, which is known as uh, Adama district. This area was highly degraded. It was completely damaged by, uh, by erosion and uh, there was no biomass. There has been very shortage of biomass for livestock and for any other purposes. The hillsides were completely barren and uh, uh, de uh, devoid of any kind of vegetation. The farmland was degraded almost to the bedrock and uh, fertility productivity was very low. Uh, there was frequent cro crop failure. That means farmers were not harvesting crop every year. It is only during the good years that they can harvest very small amount, amount of crop. For example, during good years they are harvesting only about 400 kg 
of tave crop uh, from about one hectare. So the community was very much disparate, and often they have been migrating to nearby town, Adama town, in order to get some additional income. So there has been, there have been, so in consultation with the community and the through community participation, this area was closed from livestock interference and it was treated with massive soil and water conservation measures such as hillside terraces, contour stretches, micro basins, and uh, the area was highly damaged by gully erosion. Also, there has been uh, massive gully rehabilitation measures such as sediment storage dam, check dams, and other vegetative and biological soil conservation measures. So this re gradually restored their productivity because the flood and accelerated runoff is controlled and also almost all the rain was, was made to infiltrate into the ground. This gradually improved the overall moisture condition of the catchment and also the water yields. So this gradually restored the biomass, uh, biodiversity, and also this area was, as I said, closed from livestock interference which allowed uh, frequent incorporation of crop residues. That means because the livestock is not interfering, the crop residue is always incorporated, and this allowed the recycling killing of soil organic matter uh, from year to year. So the massive soil and water conservation and the recycling of soil organic matter dramatically improved the soil fertility and the productivity. Particularly, there has been huge, huge improvement in the improvement of soil organic matter content of the soil, this improved the moisture conservation and the fertility and the productivity. After about seven to 10 years, there has been great change in productivity. The productivity increased from about 400 kg to 1,800 kg. This was a dramatic, more than 350% increase. It is not only increase of the crop production, also it sustained agricultural production. There has been